Hi, and welcome to Where Wendy Travels, Where Wendy Creates. Today we're here with Sylvia, and we're going to make a neck bone pillow. And Sylvia, what is a neck bone pillow? Well, a neck bone pillow is something you can use in the car when traveling. And what I like is after a long day of, of sewing, my neck and shoulders would be tired. So I designed this so that I could put it behind my neck and lay on my back for, let's say, 10, 15 minutes. And believe it or not, the achy muscles would let up. And I came with the thought of curving it in in the middle. That way you can grab the sides and adjust it however needed uh, for comfort under your neck. And little did I know at the time that my straight edges would go in as they joined, which actually makes it look like a bone. So we're going to call it a neck bone pillow. Well, Sylvia, that sounds great. Um, show me what we do first. Well, to start off with, we will, or I took some cardstock. I dreamed up on paper what I wanted. And here's our measurements. The largest part of the, the end of the pillow comes to approximately eight inches. Okay. That would be on both sides. Okay. And the center is going to be five and a half. Okay. Now, it will be a little smaller than this once it gets sewn because of our seam allowances. Okay. From end to end, it's a little over 17 inches. This particular cutout is 17 and a quarter. Okay. Uh, you can use 17 and a half. It doesn't make a difference. Now, what we need to do is to cut out three of these because you will see we have one, two, three, which gives us our shape and cushion. Okay. Now, we've got this pattern. First, and generally, I don't make just one. I make two at a time. Okay. Because you need the three sides, and as you cut them out... You have two here, and then you'd have two here. That would be an extra. So I cut out the two, 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 and that'll end up making three, uh, two pillows. Okay, so what I, I see you have here is quilt, quilter's cotton fabric, and you say that you also sometimes use flannel on these. Yes, I do. As you can see, this one here I showed you is the flannel. Okay. I enjoy the flannel, but some people prefer the regular quilter's cotton. Okay, um, so you can use these inside of a pillowcase or outside. Correct. And they're washable? Totally washable. Okay. Um, you're not going to need Now, when you place it on here, it depends upon you, the sewer, how you want to do it. If you place it all the way to the salvage edge, that will give you, let me show you here. That's just a hair over five inches, so that'd be a 10-inch square you could get out of that. Nice. Now, if you're not working with 10-inch squares, place it the opposite direction. And then over here, you have a five-inch running strip, which you can cut in half, and you have your two-and-a-half-inch strips, <laughs> which a lot of quilts are made out of. Okay, very nice. And for us today, what we would do is just place it on this side because my next project uses two and a half inch strips. And since this is black fabric, if we were going to do that now, we could use chalk. Yes, because if you use a rotary cutter right here, you uh, run the chance of messing up your pattern. So I take the chalk, the white chalk in this instance, and I just outline it. And then I do, then take the scissors and trim around it, cut around it with the scissors. Yes, I know that takes a little longer than our rotary cutter, but we want to be safe here. Okay. So today, I've already cut out some in flannel, and it'll make it a little quicker. And this is my flannel that I cut out. And now, I am fixing to go to the sewing machine and show you how to show you how to put it together. To start with, we've made sure our machine has a blue thread on the top, blue thread in our bobbin. Okay. 
Now what we want to do is take two other pieces and make them face to face. Okay. Fold it in half the long way. This will show you the center end. The reason for this is because we sew from the center out. Just a quick little pin on one side. A quick little pin on the next. Open it back up and take the pinned positions. Make sure that you take it and you bring it all the way through to the front. This side, as we turn back, I didn't have it hooked in both sides very well. Adjusted a touch more. Fold it over. Find your center. And pin. Okay. Once we have it this way, you will take it under your machine and slowly get a good close look at it. Slowly lower your needle to where it goes down. right next to the pin. Can you get a close up of that? Okay, once we've done that, remove that now needle. Now we want to take a quarter inch all the way around. Quarter inch seams. A quarter inch seam, correct. Wow. And you said all the way around, but you mean needle to needle, correct? Correct, needle to needle, sorry. Adjust where necessary. As you get near to the pin, you will want to slow down and do one or two stitches at a time. There we Just go. Just for the audience to know, this is uh, Wendy's machine. So, uh, yes. <laughs> you're feeling a little awkward on it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Mine is a little different. Okay. Now, once we've done that, we'll raise the foot. Trim our threads. A little different when you're uh, hijacked on and have to use somebody else's machine. Yes, that is correct. All right, generally, <laughs> this does match up better than it does. That was because I cut out in a hurry, I guess. All right, now we want to go around this one more time because it will get a lot of stress and wear. So, one more time, you mean you're double stitching, meaning going over that same stitch line, so it's double reinforced. That is correct. Excellent. Now, if I had a thought in advance and put in a dual needle, this wouldn't have to be done. It would be already and done. Of course, that would be on your machine, not mine. Correct. because we've got a third piece that we have to match up for the triangle for the next one to go up. That is correct. Our threads again. Get them out of the way. Trim and thread. Now what we need to do is open her up. Okay, let me try and get that in the can here. Push this back a little. 
Just open it up. Take your third piece here. Face down toward these two. Now see, you got the side there sewn. This one, the top is just folded back the half. Okay. You lay this on it. You know where to start and stop. I think what we're going to do is we're going to secure this a little bit. Maybe it will not walk away from us. Okay. Because this machine's a little faster than mine. Okay. Well, I put a little too much pressure on the foot, perhaps. And with this side, we'll do exactly the same thing. But what we're going to do when we get to the other end, we're going to turn around and go back in the opposite direction. Okay, so we're sewing just half of the neck bone again, just half of That is correct. Okay. Just half of one side, attaching it to one of the sides that's already sewn together. Okay. And you feel with your finger. And another good thing you can do is take you a, a needle. That way, if you lay it right next to where that seam is, you will know where the other thread is. Once you locate it, make Making sure we don't run over the needle because that will. That is on. correct. Do not leave your needles in. Okay, no sewing over needles. Okay, here we go. Couple stitches, couple back. And so we're only sewing over two pieces of fabric, not three, correct? Correct. Only two pieces. Two pieces. And I see there are no, no straight sides on a neck bone pillow. No. All curving. Everything curves. Now that's what makes it so comfortable to lay on. coming close to the edge. This time, instead of holding that other pin, I'll just take the one we had here, place it here. That shows me my stopping point. Okay. Getting close, do a stitch at a time. Pull the needle out. Do not run over the needle. And this is not hard sewing, so we can use any machine. We don't have to use a heavy-duty machine, Any correct? machine, yes. And to make sure you know how fast it is, practice first. <laughs> now that was to reinforce the ending. Okay, start and stop, start and stop. Now. Back and forward. Now I will take one stitch out here. Out, okay. Yeah, which means toward the edge. Okay. Because now, remember, we want to go backwards. Instead of taking it all out and checking it, we pinned oh, very good. it. We okay. used a couple pins this so time. Go back on uh, close to the same exact line that we have gone on. Mm -hmm. And we're still working with only two pieces of fabric. Correct. Okay. And this is a, a between a sixteenth and an eighth of an inch away from your last seam. <laughs> Take the last stitch or two. Make sure you're right at the edge, which it looks like we are. Do a little bit of back stitching. 
and that's stitch it to forward and you are done here. Remove it from the machine. Okay, we've got, let me show you what we've got. So let's push that machine back further so we can uh, see what you Okay, there. remember, first we sewed this side. Okay. Then we sewed this side with the reinforcing with it. Okay. Now we want to open it up. And you see we've got the extra side here. What it is, is it's going to be, see the bone part forming now? Okay, very good. But of course we have to do a little trimming first. We have to sew this side on also. Okay, let's get back where we were. Now what we do is we match up these two edges. Okay. And fold over the two. Yes. Let me see those other two All sides. Right. So the two that are back. stitched. Now what I did is I took the two raw edges and I shook it. And that made these two edges fall down. These Beautiful. are the sewn edges. Beautiful. Okay. Now we'll match this up as best possible. And yes, with flannel, it does move around a lot. So sometimes it's good to use a pin here and there. Also, I use a different type of pin as my guide to say, stop right here. And stop right there? That's because we leave an opening for putting our stuffing in, ah. our, our so fiber we're, fill. We're going to have the opening right in the, the middle of the third. In the lower part that would be right behind your neck. Okay. Understood. Where it goes smaller. Okay. And we only need approximately four inches. Just to get our hand to Just down enough to get, to get it turned and our hand in it. Okay. And this. I guess there's one good thing about flannel. It is flexible to a certain extent. Okay. So you can maneuver the fabric a little bit. But not when you're sewing real fast. Make sure pins. Now, this go round, what we're going to do at the corners, we have where I st we started and stopped, so we know that spot. Okay. We know we want to leave this open. So we'll start here and come here. Okay. Make sure we secure our stitches, take a stitch out okay. like we did at the end to do our turnaround, and turn around and go back. Okay. Now, tell me, just pretend like we're sewing, and tell me what that stitch out means. Well, the stitch out, all right, you're coming up this way, and then you stop, you turn it this way, take one stitch towards you. Okay. That gets it away from the other row of stitches, and then you just stitch back to where you started Needle here. Needle down, pivot, and go back the other direction. Correct. Needle okay. down, pivot. Understood. So our second sewing line does not have to be on top of the other line, but just right next to it, close. Correct. It makes okay. a touch more secure. Ah, very good. Okay. Understood. Okay. Let's get our machine a little touch closer here. We see where our seam is, so we want to go right at the edge of that. Okay, now does this leave a hole between the three pieces? No, that's why you're going right to the edge and why I'm getting a touch closer to see what I'm doing. So it's very important and that's why you've been using a needle to make sure that we're right on that and not even leaving a quarter inch. Correct. Okay. Now we gotta put that needle there because I think I'm there but not sure. Nope, not quite. There we go. That's it. So that's, that's why we it. have to be so precise. Yes, because you don't want a hole there. No, no, no. That, no that, holes. That just means a little hand stitching later. I don't want to have to hand stitch. No, no one wants to hand stitch if they don't have to. All right, let me get my machine a little closer. And now we're going to take a couple stitches. Now, of course, if I didn't have a sewing machine and I really wanted to make one of these, I could hand stitch. 
but I'd want to make sure I still uh, went over it twice and did a very tight stitch. That is correct. By hand stitching, you want to get between um, 14 or more stitches per inch. And oh, that okay. is tiny stitches. Understood. So a sewing machine makes this uh, much this easier. Yes, it does. Okay. Now we'll take a couple stitches backwards. Okay. I'm doing that manually, I think. Yes, I did that manually. Okay, remove that one. And sew up that third side. Our opening that we want to leave, we will take it, pivot. Needle down, pivot. Needle down, pivot. Take one stitch, pivot again to go back in the direction you just came. Okay. And so that was our halfway mark for stuffing. Yes. Gotcha. Now we want to go back to our the end seam where we started. Okay. As you sew, curves can be a hazard just like roads can. Curves on roads just don't go too fast. Okay. All right, we're nearing the stopping spot. A couple stitches by hand and then back. Okay, remove from the machine. Make sure your needle is up. Trim your stitches. You have that secure. Now let's go down to the other side. We'll find our spot here. Okay, let me see what we've got. Okay, go ahead. Now we've turned around. We're down to the other end. We are going to place it. Needle down, remove this pin, and now start stitching. A couple hand stitches. Well, I'm backwards to lock it. Here we go. Into the corner. Nearing our pin again. Our halfway point. Our halfway point. Okay, sort of pull the pin out so it's easier to get to. Couple stitches by hand. And one more back. Remove the pin. Backwards where you stopped. Turn, pivot with your needle down. Uh, one more run, okay. Take your stitch out. And now we go back to the start point for this side. All right, nearing the end. Another stitch or two. Line up. Correct. We're all three line up. Now, make sure the needle is up. Lift and the, the sewing machine is bouncing because we are sitting on a uh, fold-up table. So that's why we don't have the stability that uh, you normally have at your machine. Correct. So let me push this back out of the way and show us what that looks like, Sylvia. All right, we finished this edge. We have our little opening. We have our opening for doing the stuff, stuffing. Okay. And we have our three pieces sewn together. Now, you need your pinking shears. If you do not have them, just trim a little closer. 
And once you got the trim just a little bit closer to make sure it's roughly the same amount without pinky shears, then on the, the curves, you'll need to take little nips here and there. Okay, so the pinking shears or the nips allow it to turn inside out and be smooth. Correct. Okay, let's grab those pinking shears. Well, Sylvia, instead of grabbing the pinking shears, because those of us with pinking shears, I know I'm saying that wrong, uh, we know what that means. Can you tell me what nipping it means or what you do? Uh, can you just, can we just do this with sil scissors, regular scissors? And that way we can show uh, the ladies who don't have the pinking shears how to do it. Yes, okay, just take your, your scissors, whatever you use. These are the ones from the sewing machine. And what I first do, if I'm using regular scissors, is I come just a little bit away from where my stitches ended for my opening, and I cut in, and I would trim just a little bit if it needs trimming. Let's see, let's just go up to the top of this side. That'll show the trimming part. So you're just getting okay. closer to the stitch line with the trim. A little closer to the stitch line. And then when you get to where the curves start, you take just a little nip, which means about an eighth of an inch in because your seam is at a, a quarter. Take a little nip, just go about a quarter of an inch to a half an inch away take another little nip and you just keep doing this so we're just breaking those straight stitches so they don't pull when or torque that's right so what they do is when you get it turned they will open up just a slight little bit and that's all you need otherwise if they were straight it would pull and you would have like little straight edges going around okay and just a couple more here as we go around our corner. And when you get to the straight away again, you can stop doing that. And you want to do this on all your edges all the way around. Since I have the opening, I started at the opening and ran up to the top. On these other sides, I would just trim it a little bit and nip from the top of the corner here around to about when it starts to flatten out on all of the corners. Okay. Okay, so we are nipping. And we don't have to make a triangle cut. We just have to break those straight threads. Right? That is correct. Okay. That's easier than making One triangles. Side's definitely. Now we're starting on the next side. And I'm curious, when you get that done, I want to see the, the triangle where we... Here. Or several fingers. I... Take a thumbnail and I push just one corner down to get her started. And we're turning it right side out. Correct. We're, as I've heard some people call it, birthing the sewing project. I've never heard that. Interesting. <laughs> yes, I used to hear it all the time on Eleanor Burns' show. Nice. We leave those four inches so we can stick our hand in it. That is correct, because you'll need to put the fiber fill in it to fill it up. Now, put my fingers in, put my fin pointer finger on the seam and just push it out on each edge as you go around. Come down to the other side and do the same thing. Kind of like finger ironing. Correct, like Push finger ironing. That is correct. 
and no hole. Those three pieces came together real nice. No hole. Beautiful. Let me get a close-up of that if I could. Okay, nice. And now we have the, the opening spot. And what I like to do on it is to place it together before I go to fill it up. Sometimes I will put it on the ironing board and put just a hot tip of an iron here, crease those just to crease it. But you can also crease it with your finger, which does just about as well. Okay. And this is just giving it a little bit of memory of where it wants to go. Now we are ready to fill it with fiber. Okay, so we're gonna fill this up with polyfill. And what does that polyfill look like? Okay. Okay, so lots of polyfill. Cloud nine. Okay, so now we get to stuff. So we're just grabbing little handfuls and stuffing it in. And since we're making this ourselves, we can make it just as loose or as tight as we want for a pillow. Now, Sylvia, I know you have told me, and I have watched this in use for being a um, pillow under somebody's arm in a wheelchair as well. That is correct. It can be, it's good use for under the arm to um, rest the arm off the wheelchair arm if it doesn't have padding to it it's also good to put behind the lower back if they're having back trouble lumbar pillow correct it people has people in a dormitory they're matching colors it's good for uh holding your book up in your lap so you can read and write and all kind of great uses for these right Yes, and also I found a good use um, that I can actually use it when I'm laying down. Put it under my knee to keep my knee slightly bent oh. instead of being extended straight out. And that does give the knee joint some relief at times, too, when it's bothersome. Well, that is very true because I do use the ones you gave me. I use one under my neck when I'm uh, still up reading in my iPad and such, um, when I'm laying in bed, as well as putting one of these under my knee because my knee's been bothering me. Great ideas. Now we have a corner back here that doesn't have enough. So and we we'll just push it down huh? in there. Yes, we'll push it down in there. And now we wanna turn it around and start the other side. And stuffing this reminds me of the uh, the primitive um, dolls that you and I have been making as well. Uh, that's correct. Everything that's got a little bouncy, um, cushiony feel, not bouncy, but cushiony, needs a little fiber feel. Primitive dolls, primitive ornaments. We've been having fun with this box this year. Yes, we have. Okay, and we just keep on stuffing. Okay, now what we do, we make, see, we folded this before to give it a little crease. Now we make sure our little crease is there. We'll bring it together. And what we're gonna do is whip stitch this, but so we don't have to strain our fingers constantly. Okay. We are gonna put a little pin in it in several different places. Okay, absolutely beautiful. And let me see those ends again. Oh, Sylvia, that looks perfect. And that's just three mm -hmm. pieces of fabric three cut out. Three pieces of fabric. And this, now you said this was flannel material. Yes, this is but flannel. But you can use regular quilter's cotton. Yes. And we've put the needles in there holding that together. We do a little whip stitch, hiding our knots and our ends on both edges, so we're not showing that very much. And then we would be done with this. And you said you sometimes give these away as a presents and...